Delphi dragged our crew all over from Newport to Salem back to Portland looking for survivors of an earlier age, the Jazz Age, at the dawn of the motion picture. That's when going to the movie theater was an awe-inspiring event, when the audience would wait for the theater to darken and the movie to begin, accompanied by a mighty theater organ. taking you back in time, not to 1921, but only to last spring. This is the fabulous Elsinore Theater in Salem, the last movie house where you can see and hear a mighty theater pipe organ and a live organist accompanying the movie. <laughs> Over the past decade or so, organist Rick Parks and his dad installed this organ. Half of this instrument was already in our house in West Salem, and so we had no place to put the original instrument was from this theater. It was just a little bit bigger than what we had. This was in your house? Half of it. <laughs> yes. What is the trick to playing along with a movie, a silent movie? Actually, for me, it's being able to see the movie, because a lot of organists that I know of will actually write out a score. I prefer not to do that because I get to laugh along with the audience on the comedies. So it's a lot more fun for me to just improvise on the spot. It's never going to be the same the second time through. Theater organs are one of a very few musical instruments invented in the United States. Another is the banjo, by the way. It is the bastard child of classical organs, usually found in churches. When movies became America's favorite entertainment, theaters hired whole orchestras to accompany the movie. Theater owners got the bright idea that it would be a whole lot cheaper to have one instrument which could imitate an orchestra played by one person. Kind of like when DJs replaced live bands. When the theater opened on May 28, 1926, they opened with the 13-piece Elsinore Orchestra. And the organ uh, console was down in the orchestra pit in the center. Of course, when talkies came in, the theater organ was doomed to a long decline and a popular but much more marginal existence as, for instance, a roller skating aid. This organ was originally installed in the old Broadway Theater in Portland back in 1926. It was moved here in the mid-50s. So what was it like for you the first time you sat down at this four-manual monster? It was scary. It really? was very scary. What was scary about it? Well, the size of it. You know, you sit down in front of one of these things the first time, you, you don't know what all the switches do. A theater organ is like a non-digital computer. The keyboards, called manuals, are like the keyboard of your computer. The tabs, or stop tabs, tell these relays what pipes to let air through, and the key chooses the note. Basically, when I hit a key, the corresponding pneumatic here will come down, and the shorting bar will touch one of the contacts, and that signals the pipe upstairs to go ahead and play. Exactly how one of these monsters works is more complicated, but now you know the basics. This is the original organ from Oaks Park. It was installed sometime in the 1920s, but now lives here in Newport in someone's house. I had always dreamed of having one in my home and uh, I was reading the uh, ATOS journal, the American Theater Organ Society, and in the classified in the back, I read, Home Overlooking Yaquina Bay with theater pipe organ. Wow, I was in Seattle at the time. I jumped in my car with a friend. We came down here. I fell in love with the place and the organ and the view. So you bought the house equipped with the organ? Yes, this organ <laughs> has been in this house since the 1960s and it was brought down here uh, by Mr. Richard Pitts, who was a boat builder in the area. 
Lots of people have electric organs in their homes, but to have one of these requires space for all these pipes and the extra musical instruments the organ plays. Tambourine, cymbal, uh, tympanum, and of course, the popular Chinese gong. The audience here is from the Columbia River Organ Club, a group of fans, enthusiasts, and fanatics who were on an Oregon Coast organ crawl. This included a couple of concerts. It's especially important because my grandmother, of course, was a Norwegian. Now, you'll get this when I tell you the title of the song. It's called, You're the Cream in My Coffee. Of course, Norwegians, they can't go without their coffee, you see. <laughs> with and without silent movie. It is something that reaches a fiber of our being. You know, I think it's, personally, this is an opinion, that it's closest, it's one of the closest in, instruments that recreates something that is human. It's human sounding. It's, it's sort of, a, it, it encompasses in music uh, the ideal that we would like to ex be able to express. Maybe some of us can't, speak eloquently or beautifully, but somehow musically this instrument can say things we can't say uh, through its magical power.